Now, remember last time we ended with the Boston Tea Party. The colonists destroyed millions of dollars worth of the king's tea, and the king had already lowered the price of tea, but of British tea, but left a tax on it, and so colonists were so angry, and uh, they refused to buy the tea. They went and destroyed it. Now, there's got to be some kind of result from this some kind of action on the king's part to punish the colonies because they have stolen, destroyed, maimed, and the king is angry. So, after this whole big Boston Tea Party, everybody's running around with hatchets destroying the tea, king's tea, the British Parliament passed the Intolerable Acts. The Intolerable Acts. And the word intolerable means you can't take it. You just can't handle it. It's so... Hard, harsh, awful. They passed these laws as a way of punishing the colonies for the Boston Tea Party and other acts of the Sons of Liberty. Now remember, the Sons of Liberty did other things like burn tax collectors' housing, houses, uh, intimidated, threw bricks through windows, did bad things that made people, made the British scared, made tax collectors scared, made customs officers scared. They burned effigies of people. They were the bad guys, the tough guys of the uh, of the coming revolution. So, to punish Boston, the citizens, and the Sons of Liberty, number one, they closed the port of Boston. And Boston relied on its port for everything. Food was shipped through the port. Uh, goods were shipped through the port to sell legally. Goods were smuggled through the port of Boston so that money could be made illegally. Everything came through the port of Boston for that city. So by closing the port, the city suffered. People were hungry. People were uh, poor. People were cold in the winter. Also, they passed the Quartering Act, which was a law requiring colonists to provide food and housing for British soldiers. So these people already weakened, poor from the goods uh, that they couldn't get through the port of Boston, they had to now feed extra British soldiers. They also shut down the um, the Massachusetts. Uh, what is it? Let's see. They shut down the Massachusetts legislature. So the group of people that were elected to run the Massachusetts colony, the group of colonists that were elected to do that, they were all sent home. They, it was shut down. It was dissolved, if you want to use a social studies word. So that's the third thing. And then finally, British troops were sent to the colonies to enforce these laws. So even more British troops came in. Um, and it was a very scary time for the, for the, for the colonists in Boston. They were angry. They, they, tensions were high. And now more British soldiers were coming to sit and be in Boston and run it. It was basically a military state at this point. So the Intolerable Acts, what do you think was going to happen because of these? Man, I'll tell you, the colonists were ticked off. So they took action. Um, the colonists viewed the new laws as an attack on their right to self-government. Again, they had no representation in Parliament, and now their local government has been dissolved, so they organized some protests. They organized what's called the Committees of Correspondence, and that was a bunch of people, of groups in every colony that, were, that came together to spread information about the British. So these Committees of Correspondence, they would write a letter, so let's say in Boston, Samuel Adams would sit down, and he'd write, Today the British were moving from maybe Boston to Braintree, which is another town near Boston, or they're moving from Boston to Lexington. They would send those letters out to all the colonies, and then all the colonies would know the movements of the British troops. Or if a letter came in from Parliament that said, or whatever it might say, tell Boston to do something, or tell the, the governor of the colony to do something, well, the committees of correspondence would then send that letter out to all the colonies. Before email and CNN and Fox News and telephones, the committees of correspondence were the way that information was transmitted from colony to colony. So it's very important to, the, these committees were very important so that people understood what was happening in the colonies. And that was seen as a bad thing by the British Parliament and the King. It was seen as a threat 
because if these people are talking about the king and parliament they're, and they're saying all these bad things, they were inciting or encouraging revolt. All right. Also, in 1774, the first Continental Congress was called. Continental means on the continent of North America, and Congress means a bunch of representatives. So the first group of representatives from the colonies met in Philadelphia to discuss their rights. They came together and said, hey, we have certain rights as English citizens, and these rights are being taken away from us. We don't have the right to self-government anymore. We don't have the right to um, make our own taxes, which we should have. And so they sent a petition to the king to try to restore peace because between the colonies and parliament, they, man, their, their relationship was very damaged. So they asked the king to repeal the intolerable acts. And they asked by saying, hey, we have the right to make colonial laws. You fools over in England, you're six months away. It's not fair that you can make laws for us. And you've taken away our right to make laws. We've had these rights for 200 years. Also, they threatened to halt all exports to Britain. Now, that's really serious because if they don't send their goods to Britain, the whole system of mercantilism falls apart. Britain loses money on its colonies. Also, the, into or the uh, Co First Continental Congress organized a boycott of British goods. And a boycott is when people refuse to buy a certain good. So they would boycott. They would not buy any British goods. Again, that's going to really hurt Britain. They're going to lose money. And so that sounds all good, fair and good. You know, the colonies will refuse to buy British goods. And the colonies want to make things right. They want to have a peaceful relationship with Britain. And in turn, Parliament responded by adding new taxes to the colonies. So... They just didn't get it. Parliament, the king, didn't get how serious this, this, how angry the colonies were about these taxes and the lack of representation in Parliament. And because Parliament responded by adding new taxes to the colonies, the colonies said, this is it. We can see that in very short time, war is coming. And so the colonies formed militias to prepare for war. And they formed this group called the Minutemen, and the Minutemen were uh, designed to respond in case of attack at a minute's notice. And now think about it. If you are in Parliament or you're a leg you're an official from the king in Parliament in the colonies and you see them starting to make armies, that's a serious problem. That's a big, big flashing light that war is coming. All right, so let's look at these Minutemen. Um, our current Army Reserve and National Guard gets its, its, it claims its roots from these Minutemen. It was the nickname for colonial militia, or citizen soldiers. Regular people, they work during the day, but they're ready to fight at a moment's notice. They supplied their own weapons, and they had very little, very little military training, but they were ready to defend their families and their homes. And so um, they were a citizen soldier. And that's a good name for them, a citizen soldier. They work day and night as a citizen, but when they're called on, they go and they fight. Now, again, this picture comes up. Look, at this is the snake that is cut into sections. And if they don't join up, they're going to die. Now, each section is rep it represents a state. You can see NE for New England, or a colony, rather. NY for New York, NJ, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. If these pieces of the snake don't join together, the snake dies. But if the snake is together, it's very powerful and dangerous. And that was the goal that um, the Continental Congress had, was to join together all of the colonies to fight England. Before it was to fight the French, but now it's to fight England. Another image that you see nowadays with the Tea Party movement. Um, it's a snake coil, a rattlesnake coiled up. And don't tread on me. If you walk on the snake, you bet. And it's very painful and dangerous. Just like it's a message that the colony sent the king. Don't mess with us.